Okay, the Mark Scheme for Mechanics Checkpoint 1 and Resolving Forces. Our first question here, we've got a point here, A, which is held in equilibrium by three forces, twenty, uh, sorry, 15 newtons that way, 15 newtons up this way, and some weight going down this way. The uh, first thing they ask us for is the resultant horizontal component of the tension forces. Well, the force of this one to the right is 15 cos 20. That's going to the right, but this one's going to the left, so we'll make this negative, so that's minus 15 cos 20. Clearly that comes to 0 newtons. You could have just written the answer 0 newtons because obviously it's in equilibrium, so the resultant horizontal force must be 0. Okay, the resultant vertical component of the tension forces, so now we're not looking for 0 anymore because the two tension forces are both going upwards, so now we've got 15 sine 20 and we've got two lots of that because they're both going upwards so two lots of 15 sine 20 stick that in your calculator and you find that comes to 10.3 newtons okay so there's 10.3 newtons going up from these two tension forces what's the weight of the metal block well the weight of the metal block is balancing that going down so the weight of the metal block must also be 10.3 newtons. Okay, question two, a bit more complicated, because um, now we've got these two forces, uh, right angles to each other, both being held in equilibrium by this tension force. Okay, this is 250 kilograms, so let's put on there the weight of this is 250 times 9.8 um, gravity, or presumably we're on the Earth. 1200 newtons to the left. This is being held in equilibrium by this tension. Okay, what balances the force of the rope on the ball? Well, the force of the rope on the ball is the only force to the left. So that must be balanced by the component of ten the tension, which is going horizontally. Let's call that TH. Okay, so what balances the force of the rope? It's the horizontal component. Of the tension. in the cable if you like. Okay, what balances the weight of the ball? Well, that must be this component, TV, so that's the vertical component. Of the tension. Okay, the magnitude of the tension, well now we know that the horizontal component of T must balance this 1200, so this must be 1200 newtons. The vertical component of T must be 250 G. If you stick that in your calculator, uh, that comes to 2450 newtons. So to calculate the magnitude, the easiest way to do it is to do Pythagoras. So you need to do um, 1200 squared plus 2450 squared don't forget to take the square root of that, and that ends up as a tension in the cable of 2,773, let's call it 2,773 significant figures is plenty. Newtons. The angle it makes the vertical, you've got to be quite careful here. Okay, look at your triangle carefully. You've got 1,200 that way. You've got uh, 2,450 that way. It's quite tempting to do this and do a tan to get this angle here, but the angle we want is this angle, the angle to the vertical. Okay, so you could either do that angle if you like and take that away from 90, or possibly a little bit simpler, is to do this one where that's 1200 and this is 2450. So now we're doing tan minus 1 of the opposite, which is the 1200 divided by the adjacent, which is 2,450. And if you do that, you get 16.7 degrees. Okay, this question's fairly similar to the first one again. We've got two tensions, okay, but instead of being held in the middle, it's been held from the ends. That doesn't really make a lot of difference. So the horizontal component of the tension in each cable, so not the resultant now, the one in each cable. Okay, so if we look at this one, for example, the component going this way is T cos 42. 
Okay, but it's told us the tension is 850, so this is 850 times the cosine of 42 degrees, and that comes to 632 newtons. And the vertical component is T sine 42, this component here, okay, so you could do T cos 58 if you like, it's the same force. Uh, so this is 850 sine 42, and that comes to 568 newtons. And then to get the weight of the, the girder, well, these two upwards forces are balanced by the downwards force of the girder. The weight of the girder will come to in a minute. So all you've got to do here is two lots of 568 comes to uh, 1,136 newtons. Uh, on the figure, draw an arrow to show the line of action of the weight of the girder. You've got to be careful when you draw these vectors, okay? We all know weight's going downwards, but where's it going downwards from? So we need to start from the centre of mass here and go vertically downwards. Okay, question four is the trickiest one. So show how the force F can be resolved into vertical and horizontal components. Okay, we know we're going to need to draw a vertical line and a horizontal line, but it's very common for people to draw a line much too long. When you're drawing vectors, it's important that they're the right direction, but also the right length. So imagine a vertical line coming down from there. The horizontal component of F is there, okay? So that's FH, the horizontal part of F. The vertical part goes up to level with the top of F there, okay? Don't just draw the lines any old length. Uh, the magnitude of the tension is 25 newtons, so let's write that on here before we forget. 25 newtons going down there. Find the horizontal component of the tension. Okay, well, we've got... Um, the easiest way to do it is here is 25 times sine 30. Sine 30 is a half, so that's 12.5 newtons. The vertical component, that's 25 cos 30. And that works out to be 21.7 newtons. So we can split this force into its horizontal component of 12.5 newtons and its vertical component of 21.7 newtons. Seem to have a lot of forces on there at the moment, so remember these two have replaced this one, and these two have replaced this one, but we still have the weight there which we haven't taken account of. Okay, so if we think about the weight, calculate the magnitude of the vertical component of F, okay, well the vertical component of F is got to balance the component of this force, which we've already worked out, is 21.7 newtons, but also the weight of the kite, 2.5 newtons. So we've now got 21.7 plus 2.5 is 24.2 newtons going down. The horizontal component of F, well, we worked out before the horizontal component of this tension, and that was 12.5 newtons, so the horizontal component of F is just bouncing 12.5 newtons. So calculate the magnitude of F. All we have to do, again, now is Pythagoras. We've got the vertical part, we've got the horizontal part. So we put those two back together again, we get 24.2 squared plus 12.5 squared. Take the square root of all that, and you end up with 27.2 newtons.